very excited and can't wait to actually be married to the love of my life. And I'm counting down the minutes. We were at a, at a restaurant at Earth Cafe. She was just so smart and she was so pretty. And she, all of my nerdy and interesting like intellectual stuff that we were talking about, she was just totally in on it. And I was, I was completely sold right off the bat. It just sounds so sweet. It just has like that perfect melodic ring. Ariella, it's three syllables. Every syllable just has such a soft, nice sound. And it just, it rings together in such a, such a beautiful way. I can't wait for us to have a beautiful house and beautiful babies and beautiful adventures and just a life of love and happiness and giving to each other. I love you, Ariella. And you know, it, it took me a really long time to find you, but it was all worth it. I'm feeling very, very excited today. I've been waiting a very, very long time. Um, it's been, a, it's been a blessing to have met Yitzi and I'm very excited to embark on our new life together. I knew he was the one when I saw how caring and kind and brilliant and just the sweetest, most thoughtful person. And I knew that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with him. I love how adventurous he is how he gets me out of my shell, how he gets me out of the house, out of the city, out of the state. Um, he's a very, very adventurous person and it, it comes out in every way. I'm excited to walk down the aisle and, and marry the love of my life. My hopes and dreams are that we have a long, happy, healthy life together with a happy and healthy family and that we go on many adventures together and just every day be as joyful as today. Hi, Itzy June. Um, I just want to say I love you so, so much. I'm so excited for today and for the rest of our life together. May we always be this happy and this in love from this day until every day we're together.
in a second we are going to sign the Tanayim. This is traditionally the fact that uh, Yitzhi is saying that there are no other conditions that have not been included in the Ketubah, that the families have met and everything is sealed in the contract. Um, one of the things that um, Yitzhi is going to agree to both in the Tanayim and the Ketubah is financial responsibility for Ariella for the rest of their life. Um, I have on good word that Ariella is a doctor, so she'll probably be taking financial responsibility for you for the rest of her life. But um, once Yitzhi does sign the Tanayim, that there Exactly. It guarantees us to go to the chuppah to sign the ketubah and it will be your uh, financial responsibility. So I'm going to have you write um, the kanina here. You so, 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 and then we'll have the two witnesses. Yeah, sure. So I'm, I'm just signing my name. Is that it? No, yeah. not your name. Uh, the kanina. Kanina. What, am, what, what is that? I'm not sure exactly what that is. You're just uh, sealing the document like it's like, so, like, a, like a Kenyan. So, so what do I, what do I sign? What do I, what do I say? There we go. That's what he said. Oh, the Kanina. Ah. You're going to take... Let me, let, me, let, me, let me cross it off and write it myself. Okay. Because uh, technically, it can... Whatever, yeah, it's fine. Okay. okay. So we're going to... I'm going to give you this. You're going to hold it above your head. This is you officially making the Kenyan Hagba. You are going to officially take responsibility. Mazal tov. Thank you. We're going to ask the two Ede Tanayim. We're going to call up Yaakov Bechor. will be the first aid. All right. All right. All right. So we're we're digging deep into the bench here. We are now. Now we're going too far. Box on here. Uh, hands on here. Okay. You're, you're next. Yeah. <clears throat> Scary. Make sure you do it right this time. I know that I am the Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, anyway. I mean, we have to do it right now, but we have insurgents. Yeah. Well, there, there's a non-surgeon doctor in another room, but I think she's. I, I heard she's occupied. I think. I think psychiatry. Yeah, I'm not sure how I got it. How I got it. So after that brief, uh, that brief interruption, as I was saying, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Uh, I, we had, that's for them. Uh, that, we're not Persian here. What, what, what is this? Not yet. Not yet, that's true. Uh, I, I have to I'm financially supported like that. I don't know, I, I might become one. Um, but yeah, I like, uh, you know, uh, I just want to thank everyone for coming here. Um, it was, it was, it was far. Oh, the, oh, whatever. We'll talk about it later. Uh, and <laughs> no, because the Gemara says that Chas is part from Kriya Shema. Why? Because he's Isaac the Mitzvah. Because he's tired. Because he's, he's he's busy thinking about the Mitzvah he's going to perform that night. So therefore, he can't think to do, to perform Kriya Shema. So I was too busy thinking about the Mitzvah I was going to perform tonight, so I couldn't prepare a speech. That's it. <laughs> Um, but anyway, that, that, but yeah, so, so thanks everyone for coming. Um, I don't, um, people came from all over. It's a little far, it's a little, a little warm. It'll, it'll cool down later during the ceremony, hopefully during the chuppah. But um, yeah, thanks everyone for coming. I'm, I'm really moved at, um, some people came from New York, from Georgia, from Palmdale, from 
from Denver, from Los Angeles, from Mendocino County. So, so everywhere. So Lakewood, yes, Lakewood, New Jersey. Um, and I, I just want to thank I just want to thank my father, Dr. Roth, for you know all all he's done to make this make this wonderful uh, event happen. Um, I'd like to thank Rabbi Levine uh, for you know uh, offering his services to uh, you know officiate the wedding and show me what to do because I don't know otherwise. Um, and thanks everyone for coming. So. The chai means to life, so to life. Okay. Okay. No, he, he already practiced. Okay, good. Um, here you go. Here? Like, and, and, and then, you, do you want to read it now also? <clears throat> That's, it's, all, it's only in the chuppah. You're not, you want to read it now. Okay, it's a long one. It's a long one. You, 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 you yeah. Okay. Uh, whatever, 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 but, but, but son, Ben, father. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay. So just put it straight down. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't worry about that right now. Um, and I believe this goes in. Okay. Yes. Of course. I could be like something. I mean, I I Hello. Hi. Hi. Can't see you anymore. I'll pick it up later, okay? Mashiach,
afternoon under the chuppah, the Jewish wedding canopy, and the imagery of the chuppah is interesting because if you notice, if you try to stare up off into space, you can't because we have a uh, talit or we have a cloth right above us. And the imagery, the intention of the chuppah is so often our minds are elsewhere, our heads are in the cloud, we're thinking about other things, we're thinking about the future, we're worried, we're planning, we're working. And the point of the chuppah, the point of the Jewish wedding is to take a deep breath and to realize that the time that we've been waiting for is here. So much excitement, so much intent behind the wedding, and so much holiness in this chuppah. The Kabbalistic tradition teaches us that in a chuppah at a wedding, we have the ancestors and lineage of both the Chatan and the Kala here with us. Two different fascinating, incredible stories of the Jewish people over the past 1500 years meeting today in Diamond Bar at this incredible celebration between Ariella and Yitzi. So I invite you to take a deep breath, savor the moment. You've been waiting for this for a long time. Yitzi has been thinking about this wedding for months. Ariella has been planning this wedding for months. (laughs) 
and you're here, you're together, you have family and friends all surrounding you who love you very much. We begin the wedding ceremony this morning with two brachot, two blessings, one on the wine and one on the wedding itself. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei peri hagafen Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kishanu mitzvah sanu v'tivanu al harayahot v'asar lanu et harusahot v'hitir lanu et nisuon lanu ayadei chupa v'kidushihin Baruch atah Adonai mekadei shamo Yisrael ayadei chupa v'kidushihin So in a second, we'll call up our two witnesses for Kiddushin, the giving of the ring from Yitzhi and Ariella. Just a quick note about the ring, the circular ring, the idea of a circle has no stop and no finish. And so too, we bless you that your love really never has an end. It is infinite in nature and there's always more to go around and to continue. So we would like to call up Naftali Frankel and Jake Wilner to be the witnesses for Kiddushin. Tabasu Kadas Meshav Yisrael. Mazatev. So now that we are finished with Kiddushin, the first part of the wedding, we're now going to invite Yitzi to take his new talit and drape it over Ariella. The symbolism of a chuppah, if you see here, is open all on all four sides. So the idea is that in the future home that you guys are going to build together, and of course everybody here who knows you guys well knows you guys are super open, super hospitable, always happy to have people coming in and around and out of your lives. But there's also time for privacy, there's time for just the two of you to build your home together. And so the talit, the idea is that it's going to be your private home within this much wider home that is open and full of family and friends. talking a little bit earlier in the uh, Chatan's Tish about some of the stipulations that Yitzi agreed to in the Ketubah, I think most beautifully there's a line in here that even if it comes to the shirt off of Yitzi's back, if Ariella is cold, if Ariella needs anything, Yitzi is always going to be there for you. I was remarking when we were signing the Tanayim, the conditions, it's okay if I uh, repeat this in front of Ariella, I think it's a, it's a uh, good line. Usually the uh, Ketubah guarantees that Yitzi is going to be financially responsible for Ariella, but given that she is a physician, we <laughs> we're going to invite the uncle of the groom, Elliot Pesem, to read the Ketubah.
So it took me a couple of months to figure out what I was going to say to my two friends under the chuppah here, because for anybody who knows them, knows that they both come from such a depth of knowledge, both traditional Jewish knowledge, Jewish intellectual curiosity, academic Jewish knowledge, and I was afraid that whatever I say and whatever lesson I try to impart, I'm going to get a text tomorrow talking about a couple of uh, articles that prove me wrong or, or anything like that with uh, riddled with footnotes. And so I was going to give a 45-minute discussion on an Assyrian vassal treaty, but I realized that uh, our, our guests might not appreciate that as much as Ariella would. And so after spending months of thinking about what I was going to talk about, I came across an essay by a man named Asher Ginsberg, most often known by his pen name, Ahada Ah, who was one of the early thinkers that was tasked with the question of the Jews are building a state, and how do you take a people that have been spread out for thousands of years, and how do you actually build the foundation towards a new home? And Asher Ginsberg, of course, had a deep knowledge of tradition. And so what he did was he opened the Tanakh, and he looked throughout the Tanakh, what is a model of leadership that I can use to create something from nothing, to take a group of people who have been spread out around the world and build a home together. And what Asher Ginsberg Achad Am realized is you open the Tanakh and you immediately see the first type of leadership riddled all throughout the pages of the Tanakh. And those are the Kohanim and the Leviim, the priests and the Levites, all throughout the Torah, all throughout the Tanakh. And the priests in the Torah are, of course, the people in charge of the upkeep of the temple. They're there every day. They clock in at sunrise. They clock out after sunset. They're in charge of all the rituals. Nothing would get done without them. They're in charge of everything from setup to the rituals to clean up. And if the priests disappeared, and if there were no more priests, there were no more Kohanim and Leviim and people worrying about our tradition going from one generation to another, there's no way that Judaism would be able to continue. We would become a completely different people. We would have no continuity. And then he kept flipping through the Tanakh, learning throughout our history, and he came across a second leadership model of the Jewish people, that of the Nevi'im, or that of the prophets. And what Asher Ginsberg noted about the prophets is these are people who are not necessarily coming from the institutions of traditional Judaism. The Nevi'im are not usually from the same classes and families of the kings. They're almost never Kohanim or Levi'im, not from the tribe of Levi. And the prophets are individuals who come with a new, innovative, radical moral message. They're willing to shake up the status quo. They're willing to dream big. And they come and they issue challenges to the people, challenges to communities, that if it wasn't for the prophets, there would be no evolution and there would be just stagnation. And what Achad Am taught is that to build a state, to build a community, to build a home, you need both types of leadership. Because if you don't have one, you're always innovating, you're always changing, and you have no roots, you have no foundation. But if you're only innovating, then you're going to be lost to the dustbin of history because you'll fail to change and shift. And I couldn't think of a message more connected to both of you guys in terms of both your love for each other and your connection to Judaism. You have such deep connectivity, such deep roots, both Jewishly and with your family and with your friends and in the way that you guys greet every single person who comes across you. And it's full of both a deep-rooted traditionality, you're coming at this from deep, knowledgeable roots, deep, connected roots, and you're also not afraid to dream big. You're not afraid to shake up the status quo, which is why you two have already been able to build up such an incredible foundation that is certainly going to be able to last years and years and years. But I was thinking, and there's one other component that I think all good relationships need, 
And that's the idea of love. And tonight, in about two, two and a half hours, we're actually going to start the Jewish holiday of Tuba'av, the Jewish holiday of love. And this is one of the days that the Talmud talks about today and Yom Kippur are the two holiest days on the Jewish calendar. And of course, Jewish thinkers over the years were wondering what is so holy about Tu Ba'av, this Jewish day of love that can rival Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the year. And what they taught was that this was the day that all of the maidens of Israel went into the public sphere, they went into the courtyard, and they would all combine their clothing into a communal clothes pile. And everybody would grab dresses from everybody else's clothes. And then when the boys came to try to meet them, nobody was able to judge somebody based on any type of materialism, any type of physicality, but they were selecting a partner through who that person is at their essence, who they are at their soul. I don't think anybody embodies more seeing other people for their essence, for their neshama, for who they are as a person, more than you guys. And this is one of the great institutions, both of Jewish tradition, that we taught that you marry somebody for deep-rooted love, not political convenience, as in the case of the Greco-Romans. Had to throw that in there for you guys. But because you value the other for their very essence of being. And you have that same love for Jewish tradition. You have that same love clearly for your family and friends. And of course, you have that same love for each other. Mazal tov. We are now going to invite family and friends to come add to the blessings. Honored with the first of the Shavar Brachot, Daniel Kohanchi, the cousin of the bread. Baruch Adonai. Eloheinu melech olam, porei peri ha-gefen. Amen. Honored with the second brachot, Avraham Basari, uncle of the bride. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, shechionu berot lechovot. Honored with the third bracha is Moshe Roth, brother of the groom. Amen. Honored with the fourth bracha, Moshe Basiri, cousin of the bread. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Ashe yasa el hadam besalmo Besalem de modib nito Bechatan lo mimenu binyad ad od Baruch atah Adonai yotzer haadam Honored with the fifth bracha is Yaakov Bishop, brother-in-law of the group. Honored with the sixth bracha is Menachem Zussman, brother-in-law of the group. <laughs> Honored with the seventh and final bracha is Noah Burstein, uncle of the groom. <laughs>
the ship. So for thousands of years, at the end of a Jewish wedding, we finished by saying Imash Kachei for Yerushalayim, discussing the destruction of Jerusalem 2,000 years ago, and we do that by breaking a glass. And at one glance, this seems strange ending a wedding on such a sad, somber note. On the other hand, in Judaism, we don't recognize brokenness for its own sake, but we recognize brokenness because we fun fundamentally believe everything that's broken can actually be fixed. And so the first thing that we as a community and Judaism as a tradition is giving you guys as an imperative, the first thing after your wedding is to recognize the brokenness so you can spend the rest of your lives putting the pieces back together of our broken world. Listen to my anthem, tune out the noises from my past and look up, remember where my help comes from, yeah. Push back, I'm tired of feeling broken, truth rings louder than emotion, take time, remember what it means to love, yeah. Here's another chance to see the change we need, see a miracle when we walk these streets, living life in the light, redefine.
heavens Let go so I can hold the blessing You've been better than I've been to myself Yeah Lay down my weapons for the wisdom Sing loud the voice that I've been given So loud, believe until the walls come down Yeah Here's another chance to see the change we need See a miracle when we walk these streets Living life in the light, redefining the land of the free Keep up, fill up the break, gonna hit the gas, gonna rev it on up. Now I'm coming in fast, I'll make it swerve when I hug the turns. Better get out the kitchen, cause you're gonna get burned, yeah. What you gonna do? Oh, na, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. What you gonna do? Na, 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 what you gonna do? 
money like I just got paid Hundred dollar bills, tell them keep the change Come on mm -hmm. Yeah, pop a bottle, about to make it rain Let me give you something now to celebrate Come on mm -hmm. And if you're wondering why I move the way I do I just feel so good, good, good Oh, 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 I just feel so good I see the world through my thrift store shades Colored lenses and a fake gold frame Come on mm -hmm. Playing old rock songs on a air guitar Posing for your picture like a superstar yeah, Come on mm -hmm. And if you're wondering why I move the way I do I just feel so good With you 
Like a river flows Surely to the sea Darling, so it goes Some things are meant to be Take my hand Take my whole life to you For I can't help falling in love with you If I can't help falling in love with you Kapa <laughs> Mishifta im zikne yaret sadin az zavatim kar Vachagar nas lak nani 
אז אחד הלבוש אבת יצחק ליום אחרון פי הפסחא וחכמה ושרס חסד הלשון הצפי הליכוי זביסה וחמאץ וסוי שכר קם ובנר וישרוע ביי לוי חלו רבו יזבנו סוס וחיו ואטליס על כולנו שקר אחרי בהבל היופי איש העיר השדוי נאי איזיס על אלתנו לא מפרי ידי אבי הללויה מה שיורם מעשה Make some noise if you're ready. That's what I'm talking about. One. Two. One, two, three, go. 